Welcome to the latest episode, the latest show, the latest version of Lost Treasures. And let us talk today about two bands. One that you more than likely have not heard or heard of, a few of you probably, and then another one that many of you certainly have. And we are going to talk about today a band called Elgin Park from Los Angeles that released an album in 2001. I don't have my original copy of that. I have a different version that I bought on mp3.com. Do you guys remember mp3.com? There was a very short time that they released CDs that you could buy and people would upload the songs in progress and you could buy sort of a custom CD. And I did that with Elgin Park. And a lot of the songs that I have on my album weren't didn't end up appearing on the record when it eventually came out in 2001 and then the second band that I wanted to talk to you about is Imperial Drag this was the the band that uh, featured Eric Dover and Roger Manning from Jellyfish after Jellyfish broke up and released one fabulous record in 1995 that sunk without too much of a dent, sadly, tragically, it certainly was grotesquely overlooked by everybody. So we're going to talk about them first. I'm going to show you a couple CDs here, um, but I am going to treat you to not cuts in the sound bites below from the album, which you more than likely have heard, but some snippets of unreleased uh, Imperial Drag uh, in the hopes that uh, that to do this material justice because there was some great material that never came out from the band. They recorded an awful lot and there has been talk and mumblings over the years that this material was going to come out. As a matter of fact, I talked to um, somebody connected to the band. I can't recall back around 2002 uh, or so and um, I can't remember. It just didn't, It just didn't happen for some reason. I don't recall. Um, that's really ridiculous, but it's true, just being honest. And, uh, and then I know there was some very serious talks um, that was, was going on about two, three years ago, and nothing has ever come about them. So I'm hoping that maybe some discussion of the band here and the Jellyfish uh, book that we have in progress here at Pop Geek Heaven will spur some action in that regard. It would be really great. Uh, because the material was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Imperial Drag definitely indulged uh, the band, especially in particular uh, Roger Joseph Manning Jr.'s uh, fetish with uh, early mid-70s glam rock um, cliches and turning them upside down and, and not leaving the cliches there. They just always had a way with a guitar guitar line, a guitar hook, and uh, then, of course, how can these guys not make melodies and harmonies with anything that they write? Impossible. Yes, it is. So I really hope that you enjoy this uh, this sort of uh, delving into um, a part of Imperial Drags and post-Jellyfish past and history that you may not be aware of, and, I, and, uh, and, and hope someday formally uh, this will happen and will come out in a proper CD and, and that you'll be able to buy this material. I cannot put full songs up here because that would be not bueno um, and, uh, and not cool. And uh, so, um, I, but I do want to hear and sort of bait you with, with, uh, with this stuff in the hopes that uh, it will really, really excite you about digging into not only Jellyfish and Roger Joseph Manning's uh, solo work, uh, but also the Imperial Drag, which I'll include a link on if you don't own that CD that came out on uh, Columbia, I think it was, or CBS, Sony, um, then uh, you certainly should. Now, let's talk about Elgin Park real quickly. This is a really cool band, and uh, their, their one song is a classic um, called What I Can't Do, which kind of reminds me of Talking Heads and, and Weezer a little bit. It certainly fit the sound at that time uh, pretty well. Also reminded me of Squeeze, Elvis Costello. Um, what else did they have going on? I'm trying to remember uh, what they what what this material kind of reminds me of. Yeah, Joe Jackson maybe. Uh, definitely new wavy, but all updated 
to that kind of sound that a lot of the quirky kind of pop bands that were appearing on major labels like Sugar Plastic, for example, were doing at the time in 2000, 2001, especially on the Los Angeles scene uh, at that time. And uh, they shot this record for quite a while, was my understanding. Um, nobody bit on it, so they eventually self-released it, or it might have been on a really small label that I think only released this record. Uh, it is readily available still, though, uh, on Amazon, and I'll include links on there so you can pick that up. And uh, in the meantime, you can enjoy some of the sound bites that I've included here to uh, properly uh, inspire you to do so. Anyway, that is it for this episode of Lost Treasures, and we will talk to you next week.